Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and welcome to today's broadcast of Between Friends. Thanks for joining me. I see many of you are signing in. We got a Jersey girl, Teresa Stagliano and Chris Yost from California. Welcome. Aloha, Judy Warren. It's so nice to have you all here today. And you know, it is the big April reveal. Hi, Judy Whitaker. Nice to have you here. We found your last minute upload. So coming soon in a little while, we'll share that. And hello, Isabel Brian from France. You know, it's hi, Sue Brown. Oh, Sue Brown, thanks for tuning in. I know you're anxious to find out what's going to happen in your sewing studio on Saturday, right? As you do your sew along with the OML gang. So, those of you who don't know, um, let, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the small town charms. But really, before we do that, I have an important kind of business topic to talk to you about. And that is um, our, we're, we were spoofed on Facebook. And um, our account, you know, this is a scary thing. So you may receive, or you may have received a Facebook message from us that says, congratulations, you are very lucky to be selected to win a prize, blah, blah, blah. That's not us. So do not um, click on it it's best to report it to Facebook directly. And that will, um, you know, get Facebook to take this down so that, you know, this person or bot, whatever it is that is doing that, stops this annoyance. So we would appreciate your cooperation in that. So again, we're never going to ask you for financial information, personal information on Facebook or social media. And uh, we are currently not running any giveaways or prizes. If we were, it wouldn't look like that. It would be something that you are completely aware of and participating in. So don't be, you know, don't get snookered. We wouldn't want, and I don't know what happens if you do click on it. Let's not find out, right? Um, hi, Dory Hobson. It's great to have all you folks here. And Phyllis, you're in Maryland. You think you've got some bad weather coming your way. We had tornado warnings last night at my house. That's a little scary for me. You know, I'm really a Jersey girl. So tornadoes, um, I didn't grow up with that. We were more of hurricane people at the, at the Jersey Shore, but everything was fine. It never did touch down. Just all those sirens at 10 o'clock at night are a little scary, right? So, um, and Let's see, Penny Ramsey, it is sunny up there. Wow, in Washington State. Always happy to hear about sun in Washington State. And hello, Lorraine Allen. Nice to have you here. Lorraine used to uh, work for us here at Dime, and she has since moved out of the state, so she's no longer with us. But um, so for those of you who are new, who have never watched before, I just want you to know what this small town charm is all about. And it's a monthly giveaway. And many people are participating in a sew along with our friends at OML Embroidery hosted by Sue Brown on Saturday morning. So today, the last Thursday of the month, I reveal the small town charm for the month. And then you go to our website and download it, you know, for free. And it'll be up in just a little while. But in January, we did a quilt shop. It was super cute. So we have one for a seven by 12 hoop and one for a five by seven. That was two hoopings. So uh, in the five by seven. So even though it looks bigger than a five by seven, it is because it was two hoopings. And in February, we did a, a quilt shop because, you know, who, uh, no, we didn't do the quilt shop. We did the sweet shop. I have to fix that slide. Uh, so after your visit to the quilt shop, would you like to go and have a, a nice, sweet little treat? And after that, we, in March, we did the dress shop, So Chic, and it featured some handbags, cute little chandelier. And many of you, you know, went off in a different direction. You added a second story and an attic and oh, all kinds of fun stuff. So let's take a look at Lottie Conrad. This uh, she just posted recently. I love the variegated thread she used there in her dress. It might be our sunset uh, of the medley variegated by exquisite. I'm guessing that's what it is. But I love the handbags that she did. She chose a navy and the green with the green trim on the handbag in the uh, background. Just lovely. Really nice job, Lottie. Boy, your work is exquisite. 
Judy Whitaker. She confessed that she just got all of this uh, finished just in the nick of time, and she had a couple catastrophes along the way. But she always goes the extra mile. So you can see she's added some ladies inside her, her store, probably welcoming um, ladies in. And then she also has a seagull there on the, um, on the foreground. But in her attic, now sh this is something that she creates. It is not part of the embroidery design. So she builds an attic or, attic or second story. Let's take a closer look at what she did there. She's got a poodle a corset, two dress, you know, on the dress form. Oh, how beautiful. Judy, very well done. It is lovely, really lovely. And your choice of fabrics is stunning. I know, Judy Warren, right? You're impressed with her. I know, me too. Isn't that great? It's just lovely. Really good job. Everybody loves that. Hello, Barb Bluff from Fort Worth. I bet you had some bad weather last night too. Um, you, that, you were right in that path. So before we take a look at the April door, we're gonna talk about what I'm wearing. So I'm wearing my boho neckline from um, Designs and let's go ahead and advance that slide. There we go, where am I at? Oh, I have, I have two mice here, so I'm getting confused. The boho t-shirts is a collection that we introduced in December and it has, uh, it comes with your choice of thread and a, and a pack of needles is also included. There's four t-shirt makeovers in it. I'm wearing one and there's uh, three more. So let's take a look. I was inspired by what I was finding in retail. These are the kind of things I was seeing online and in catalogs and also in stores. You know, solid matte thread with uh, just a couple colors on the garment but in big chunky stitches. So that's a heavier weight thread. That's our 15 weight thread. Um, so that's how, why I designed these t-shirts because I know that they stitch really fast and uh, it's quite doable on our, on our uh, machines. So here is the one that I'm wearing right now. This is Boho One and the, this version that I'm wearing, it was done in one hooping in a seven by 12 hoop. But if you have a five by seven hoop, then you would stitch the smaller version, which just has a, the upper portion is not included. And that whole finish for the neckline is included in the digitized file because I started with just a regular rib neck crew neck t-shirt. And of course there's a sleeve design, which is just oh so lovely, right? And we gotta turn that, it's twisted around on me. Oh, hey, look who's in the house, Steve Jeffrey. Woo-hoo. Y'all know Steve Jeffrey? Steve Jeffrey uh, was the president of Baby Lock for many, many years. So nice to have you here, Steve. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Um, okay, so let's back to business. Just always nice to give a shout out to someone who I uh, haven't seen in a while. He's enjoying retirement. So let's see, Boho 2 is three different hoopings. And this one is just a complete splash of color, right? But it has a really interesting neckline. It, it's a little bit different. It has the V and then it gives you another curve along the edge. And so let's go ahead and get a close up of the PowerPoint on that so they can get a better image. See how it has that nice little shape at the neckline? That's all done in the hoop. And it's three hoopings, super easy to do though, because you see those long vertical lines uh, that are on either the you know right side or the left side of the embroidery. Well, that designates the center of the garment. And of course it comes with printable instructions that you can um, follow step-by-step, step, clearly illustrated with photos. And then the last one of course is that center design and uh, that finishes off the neckline. Really, really fun. Super easy to do. I mean, you can do that in under an hour, the whole thing, start to finish. Boho th three is, has a lot of punch, right? Big medallions that are just filled with wide satin stitches of that heavyweight thread. And oh boy, it really does add quite, um, a, quite a punch to a plain basic black t-shirt. And that's fun, right? Judy, you love the boho. I know I love the boho too. And if you're in Hawaii, you don't have to make it in long sleeves, right? You can make it in short sleeves or whatever you desire. Also works on sweatshirts for sure. 
And then our last offering, Boho 4, um, this is, you know, you can do it in a variety of colorways. Now we chose to use three different colors in the one garment on the right and the, the, both of those garments, but you most certainly could do that in a monochromatic look and oh, that would just be beautiful also. Just beautiful. So how do you do it? Well, the first hoopie, now I use PAL, Perfect Alignment Laser, but there are instructions on how you would use this multi-hooping technique without the PAL, the Perfect Alignment Laser. So it's clearly illustrated in the instructions on how to do that. So your first hooping, you just hoop the first color, which is the placement guide for the center of the shirt. And you're going to use an adhesive water soluble stabilizer. So it is, you know, it, the garment will just stick right to it. Let's see. And Sue Brown, you say you like the, uh, you like the Ford the best. Okay. I agree. And metallic threads would look great, but you know, you really need that heavy 15 weight. That's what fills in that space. These designs have been digitized specifically for that weight thread. And let's see, Diana Atkinson wants to know, would this stitch on gauze fabric? Absolutely, it most certainly would. I did a whole peasant blouse with this very same technique, not the exact designs, but designs that were digitized in the very same fashion with the same 15 weight thread. And it's stunning, it's really beautiful. Uh, and let's see, uh, Wendy is the heavier thread, the vintage that you spotlighted a week ago. Well, our vintage thread comes in two weights, a 40 weight, which I showed last week, and then the 15 weight, which we are showcasing today. And that 15 weight comes with the purchase of this neckline collection. So let's go ahead and take a look at hooping number two. So hooping number two, well, it, um, you know, you have to stitch the hoop, right? You have to do the placement guide, then you actually go ahead and apply the t-shirt, uh, apply the t-shirt and then stitch the pretty part of um, the, the, the left design, pardon me. Uh, okay, and now we re-hoop and stitch color one, which is the placement guide, lay it under PAL and you um, then just align the center of the t-shirt with that stitched crosshair, place the garment in position, you know, your pin, your, your mark on the shirt is aligning with that crosshair. And then you stitch the rest of that design on the right hand side. And uh, lastly, you're going to stitch one more crosshair and all of these crosshairs are a part of the embroidery design. They're just included, you know, it's the first color of the embroidery design. You center that shirt on that hooped water soluble adhesive stabilizer, and then you stitch that last design. And that's the beauty. It's kind of when the magic happens, right? And Crystal Campbell, do you need a special needle? You do need a special needle for this 15 weight thread and that's a top stitch needle and the pack of needles by Schmetz comes with the collection and the box of thread. So you'd be all set. You don't have to make an additional purchase. Okay, so let's see. Now the last thing, this is our third hooping. The last color of the third hooping is when you finish the neckline. So I have Trico knit interfacing. I used our Fuso Soft at this step and I placed it glue side up, which sounds counterintuitive, but believe me, that's what works. And then we are going to stitch the next color, which is the outline of the neckline. And that's what's going to transform the neckline. Once we take it out of the hoop, we um, just press it, you know, cut it open, press it to the right side. And there you have it. It's that easy. Yeah, let's see. Oh, uh, <laughs> Judy Whitaker wants to watch Sue Brown do this stitch by stitch, minute by minute. Yeah, well, it's pretty fun, super fun. Okay, so let's take a look at the threads that you have choices. You don't have to go with one that I pre-selected. You have your choice of whether you want to use the pastels. So all of this comes with the neckline collection, the thread and the pack of needles. So you get 12 colors and these are all the 15 weights. So you can really mix and match, super easy to do. Or the earth tones. Now, you know, don't be, you know, earth tones can look a little, um, maybe too earthy for some people, but when you place those earth tone pinks and greens on, let's say kind of a gray t-shirt or maybe a black t-shirt, 
they really pop. So don't, you know, don't be swayed uh, and think, oh, the, you know, maybe that's not an appealing collection. It is. They really are for sure. So, um, and then the bright colors, well, of course, it's all brights. That's the one uh, that I think Boho 2 I did in all those brights. Super fun, really great for the summer, you know, whatever you decide. But um, I have five tips for you to make sure you have success with this project. And number one is go girly, right? Pick some really fun colors to go with the t-shirts that you purchase. Think contrast. You really want your thread to separate from the t-shirt itself. So this is not a monochromatic look that you're going for. You want everybody to see those beautiful stitches. So think contrast. Number two is go hefty, right? With that 15 weight thread. These designs have been digitized specifically for that weight thread. So if you use a standard embroidery thread, you will not get the coverage that you're expecting. Your finished uh, t-shirt will not look like the image on the package. So, you know, kind of, that's why we're including the thread. So you can't make a mistake. Okay. Number three, use a big eye and that's the needle. So you want to make sure you use that uh, top stitch needle that comes with your purchase. And of course there's five in that pack. So plenty of, you can use that for plenty of t-shirts. And number four, stand tall. And that doesn't mean when you're wearing it, although that's always good advice. Stand tall is to use a thread stand for this 15 weight thread. Now remember, this is a novelty thread. So this isn't going to run, you know, at, at 1200 stitches a minute, you're going to slow it down. I think that's my next tip, but it's best to put it on a vertical pin so that it feeds evenly into the machine. And yes, number five is slow down. Slow down your machine to about 600 uh, stitches per minute and you'll just you know, you won't have any problem. Or now you want to know what do you put in the bobbin? Well, just regular bobbin, embroidery bobbin thread. That's what I use. It'll balance just fine. You're not really going to pull that 15 weight to the back of the garment. Uh, let me see if I can show the inside of one without making an absolute mess here like I am. <laughs> it's dangerous. No, it does. It does pull to the back. It does. So, yep, yeah, but you definitely just want to use the bobbin weight uh, thread. Less is more. Mm -hmm. less, less is more. And Judy, you like using the thread stand. Oh, you are well-trained. You are well-trained. <laughs> I don't like doing anything special. I just want to stitch. Let's see. Does our software work with Mac? Yes, absolutely. All of our software works with Mac. And our embroidery designs do also, Rita. Hope you're feeling well, Rita. I know that you were under the weather a while ago. Okay, so let's see. We are about to reveal our small town charm for April. I'm wondering, what do you think it is? Any guesses? Anybody want to put some comments in? Tell me if you think uh, it's what? A restaurant? Uh, a lighthouse? A city hall? What do you think it is? Hmm? No comments? Okay. I guess we'll just do the big reveal. So it is a flower shop. Isn't that fun? Oh, I just love blooms. Pet shop, coffee shop, coffee shop, bunny hop shop. I don't know what a pet shop. Oh, you lots of pet shop, jewelry store, candy shop, bookstore. Nope, it's a flower shop. Chris Yost, you're the winner. And what do you win? Well, you win, um, you're just winner of the week. So give yourself an extra cup of coffee or tea, whatever your pleasure is today. Or if you're a, you know, a red wine drinker, have a glass tonight. So anyway, yeah, I'm working on the rest of the years. So the rest of the months, I should say. But let's talk a little bit about this. So I'm going to go through the steps. So the one on the left is our 7 by 12, and the one on the right is our 5 by 7. So first let's go through that five by seven, <clears throat> excuse me. And it is, uh, it has of course the awning, which is a separate hooping. And ooh, what happened? Did we lose uh, my PowerPoint? Uh-oh, I lost my PowerPoint, I got kicked out. So we'll just dance here a little bit and tell me what kind of flowers you would use if it was your, um, your shop. Something went wrong, it's telling me in StreamYard. 
Okay, so let's see if we can get back in. What is the address for the designs? Uh, here you go. Our team is posting it right now. And in we go. Let's see if we can't make this happen again. Share my screen so you can see all these step outs. All righty. There we go. We're back. Is the only difference in the amount of the hoopings? Uh, in, in today's, uh, Diana, in, t in this month's Small Town Charm, it is really just the size. There has been no additions or eliminations between the 5 by 7 or the 7 by 12. It, that's not true every month, but this month it is true. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's see. Uh, blue bonnets. Yes. Tr Tricia Cox, you want to see some blue bonnets. I don't, yeah, I don't blame you. I'm hoping to see them this weekend. Okay. So let's take a close look at how we are going to make this beautiful flower box. Um, oh, here we go. Okay. So first color, right? You're going to hoop cutaway stabilizer and stitch the first color, which is the placement guide for the, the shop itself and then you will stitch the brick. Well, it's not really brick, it's the kind of big stone, like large stone walls, and then the satin outline. Next up, you're going to take a strip of fabric, and of course, all of these instructions are included in the download, and so you will take your strip of sidewalk fabric and place that right sides together and stitch the next color, which is the seam and then flip that down, that piece of fabric, and stitch the following colors, which is some uh, detail on the sidewalk and then also the tack down of the sidewalk. Next up, you're gonna trim that away. And then you're going to, uh, a placement guide for the door will stitch. And in this case, I chose a red door and black panel details and a placement guide for the window. Now I know you ladies, so many of you participants love to add vinyl and actually look into the window. So if you do that, you're going to have to put something interesting in that area and cut open the door or, you know, well, I'm gonna leave it up to you because I know you have lots of creativity in that area. Now, here's a challenge that I encountered, and I expect your colors to be better than my choices. I really kind of got, got under the gun time-wise, so I wasn't able to do a second version of this. But notice, I chose kind of a, a darkish brown for that stand, you know, the kind of bookcase or whatever you want to call it that the pots will stand on. And then the dark green, mid-green fabric that I chose is not... Um, really separating from that stand. So just choose carefully, right? Just pay attention to your lights and your darks and making sure you are um, selecting the right one. And Becky Berlin, you say the link for the download is not working. It may not be up just yet because the minute we put it up, you all leave me here. So sometimes we just like you to stay for a little while. And, but just give it a couple of minutes. I'm sure my team is on it. Thank you. Okay, and then all of your pretty flowers. You're going to have so much fun adding flowers in here. Now, I made the sign blooms, and the word, of course, blooms is a separate color. So if you want to change that name and put in your own name, you most certainly can, for sure. So, okay, the awning. Let's take a look at the awning. For the five by seven, you're going to hoop two layers, you're going to hoop cutaway stabilizer and then place two layers of fabric right sides together in the hoop. Just lay it right on top of the hoop and it's going to stitch the awning, which is just that. It's just an outline. Then take your quilter's ruler and place the quarter inch mark above the top edge of the awning or make it a half inch, you know, be generous with yourself. Next is trimming those scallops and that can get a little tricky. So I like to leave about an eighth of an inch of fabric beyond the stitch line and into the peaks of the scallop. I snip into each corner, creating a little triangular flap between those two, you know, scallops. And that gives you a pretty um, nice sharp turn. So uh, take the time to do that. You, you know, just be careful. You might also decide that when you stitch that awning, right, it's just one line of stitching, 
stitch it again, get a double row of stitches and that might make you give you more security. Okay, and then once it's all trimmed, you're going to turn it right sides out. Take the time, you know, you'll use a, um, a point turner or the end of a pencil. I use tweezers. I insert the tweezers into the scallop and push it out very carefully and then use a point turner to kind of smooth it. And maybe next week we'll take a closer look at that. Um, that technique. And then I put a pipe cleaner inside. Now cut your pipe, pipe cleaner. I think it's seven inches. The instructions uh, tell you that set a seven inch length of pipe cleaner and you're going to put it right inside that awning and that's what's going to give it its 3D look. So then smush it, <laughs> lack of a better term, right? Smush it down to the top of the scallops and then take it to the machine and top stitch that. Just edge, edge stitch right along that uh, pipe cleaner and you know no harm no foul if you stitch into it really you don't even break a needle the needle will just deflect it, it i wouldn't worry about it and now the tricky part is to apply the awning to the quilt block that you've made so you're going you've already trimmed off a, and a left a quarter inch of a seam allowance on the awning beyond the stitch line, correct? And then you're going to take a ruler and mark mark an inch and a quarter above the top edge of the flower shop. And that's where you line the edge, the raw edge of the awning. Now the awning, of course, is right side down at this point, right? It's flapping up in the air. And then after that, when you... Um, flip it down, then you can just top stitch that edge. So super easy to do. And then the seven by 12 is a little different because this is a freestanding two hooping project. And let's see, Barbara Hansen, she, she uses the blunt end of a seam ripper to push out the scallops and then turned the curves with a point turner. Very good, excellent idea, excellent idea. And Victoria, you want, how about a machine and embroidery shop? Well, in the, in January, Victoria, we did a quilt cool shop that had a machine on the table. So it's a great suggestion and uh, I'll keep it in mind because it could really be a lot more uh, thread or, or machine embroidery specific. So thank you for that idea. Okay. So on the seven by 12, you're going to hoop cutaway stabilizer and lay a piece of batting on top of the hoop and stitch color one, which is going to give you the tack down of the batting. And then see those two notches that are um, stitched near the bottom of like the lower third, that's going to be where you need enough fabric to cover the, the shop. The bottom portion below those notches is a sidewalk. So it's just a guideline for you. And then if you're like me, you'll just use a big piece of fabric and cover it all and then stitch those um, beautiful details and tack down and take your sidewalk fabric right sides together, making sure that the raw edge of that sidewalk fabric extends beyond the bottom of the flower shop and stitch the tack down and the sidewalk details. And then Cut, it will stitch a placement guide for the blue door. Now, I love that color blue. Is that stunning? It makes me want to paint my own front door at home that color. I, well, I'm kind of wearing that color. Yeah, all right. So I love blue. But boy, I just think that is one pretty blue door. And it would be an inviting door to walk through, right? So next up is details on that door. You're going to have the panels and also a placement guide for the window. This time I just used my sidewalk fabric, fabric, but I used the wrong side of it. So it still has that kind of color wash, but it's much lighter than my sidewalk. And uh, that worked out great. So Nancy Modell, you wanna know, do you have to do the batting? You don't have to do the batting, absolutely not. You can just use cutaway stabilizer, give it some body. And in fact, you can also stitch this on a you know quilt block fabric you don't have to make it three stand freestanding that's entirely up to you okay so after we uh place that that uh fabric then we're going to trim away the excess and uh there's your window i know some of you are going to do a lot better job on the window than i did Okay, but Nancy Modell, Judy Whitt Whitaker tells you the batting really adds a lot. And here, I can tell you, it does. And you know what? It kind of flattens out. 
you know, it's not real puffy. See how thin it is? It's This is uh, warm and natural cotton batting. And so it doesn't make it really fluffy. But what it does do is fill in the texture of the stone and the sidewalk. And, you know, it, it kind of hides any puckers. If there's any kind of puckers or anything around those pretty flowers, you don't see them. I don't have them occurring in this. So don't be afraid of batting. You know, batting, uh, look at it like spandex, right? You don't really want to wear it, but it makes a lot of people look better. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Now, we this time I chose an aqua color for the stand and, um, and then black details right and left, you know, the horizontal lines and that top edging is also in black. And again, you know, let's be careful about our thread choices. I think I did a better job here because my aqua stand is a fairly light color, just like the stone wall. So, you know, if you're going with all light value, it's easier to select to select thread colors on top of that or vice versa. So now we do some pots and they come kind of in threes and twos. Pay attention to the instructions. And, uh, and of course, you'll look at the design on your machine as it stitches. And then uh, the sign and the chain for the hanging basket are all in one. And Blooms is our last. Now notice, ladies, I left uh, this project, this small town charm, is pretty heavy on the right side. That's where all the decoration is. And there's nothing really happening in the foreground. And there's nothing happening underneath that hanging basket. So I can't wait to see what you put there, right? That's going to really be something for sure. So, uh, oh, hi, Reen Wilcoxon. She says the fabric door looks like dime blue. It does. But you know what, Reen? It's really prettier than dime blue. <laughs> But thank you. Good call. Okay, so our last step that we do for the flower shop uh, body, the first story, is add our backing. And I chose to use the same fabric as the actual flower shop. So right sides together, cover the whole uh, embroidery project with the fabric, stitch the next color, which will leave that opening at the top for you to turn. Take it all out of the hoop. Trim that cutaway stabilizer as close as you can to the outline edges. Trim the fabrics pretty close to the corners. I like to go into the corners at an angle. You can see each corner has uh, right and left of it, top or bottom of the actual corner. I have cut the fabric at an angle, and that just reduces the amount of bulk that is inside the quilt, you know, the little quilt block when you turn it right side out. And then there you have it. And now I have my clips in place to finish that top. And I go to the machine and I edge stitch all four edges. So super fun to do. Um, yeah, I really had a good time doing that. So Sam, I'm, I'm having a little technical difficulty here. So Sam, if you just take me out and would you put the spe today's special up so I can um, work on PowerPoint just for a moment? There we go. Thank you. Y'all know too much. You come, you watch me all, every week. Okay, I'm, I'm back at it. There we go. Okay, we're back at it. So now we have to do the awning for um, the seven by 12. And the awning for the seven by 12 is just a little different because it's not gonna be sewn to anything. So uh, you're going to stitch a placement guide on cutaway stabilizer. And then the next thing you do is place the wrong side, the back of the awning, the lining of the awning, right side up in the, in the hoop, covering that placement guide. And you'll stitch the next color, which is just a short horizontal line. You can see that little black line at the bottom of the ribbon. And then you place a length of ribbon that's been folded in half. You put the fold right at that stitch line and tape it in place so you don't, you know, no, you don't want to stitch over it later on. And then place your, oh, then the next color that stitches is a tack down, forgive me, is a vertical tack down for the ribbon. And you're going to use that ribbon to tie it to the arch frame, which I'll show you in a moment. Okay, and then we stitch the, uh, lay the, the outside of the awning, right sides together and stitch and then same steps for finishing cutting like we did on the five by seven but uh then we'll add that 
we will add the um, pipe cleaner inside, smush it down to the bottom and so forth. But here, I just wanna show you how it, it attaches to this frame. So here's our frame, right? This is our frame. And uh, so I just, the ribbon is added during the steps of the embroidery. And then I just tie it to the back of the frame. And on the back of my quilt block, I would should have added two lengths of ribbon that would then slide over here. But you and I, we have these secrets and we know that this works too. It'll just stand there so lovely. So, um, you know, I would fuss with this a little bit and you might want to bring this up just a tad, you know, just kind of work on it to get it a little higher so the scalps don't cover blooms, but all in all, pretty good. And let's see, do you cut it? Barbara Hansen wants to know, do you cut any of the awning stabilizer before attaching it to the five by seven block? Well, you know, it really needs some body, Barbara. Otherwise it's just kind of, uh, if the fabric is very limp, it will appear wrinkled because there's no stitching inside of it. You know, there's no texture, no lines. So I do leave the cutaway. I try to, uh, I cut, I do trim the cutaway at the very top of the edge of the awning where the stitching in the hoop had stopped. So I remove it from the seam allowance of the awning. And that does help. Mm -hmm. And let's see, Judy Whitaker, who is, you know, doing fabulously with these, um, with these small town charms. So what does she say? She says she leaves it in when making the, the shops into quilt blocks. The awnings are much sturdier and no wash. Yeah. And no washing this quilt in the future. Definitely. You're, we're not washing these small town charms. Um, you know, at home, they would be a decorative item up on a wall, maybe a bookcase, a countertop, something like that. Um, so it's definitely not something that's going to be worn. And let's see, to make a wall hanging by stitching it directly on quilting fabric, should I put the awnings on? So Becky, if you were doing the seven by 12 and going to make that into a big quilt block, let's say, right, a 10 inch by 10 inch or something, 12, it would have to be bigger than that, whatever, you know, then follow the directions for the awning of the five by seven. After you've made the seven by 12, make the seven by 12, but finish it like the other awning, I think. I think that would work. Might not possibly, you might, instead of here, I can, we, we can flip back on those slides and I can just show you quickly. Let me see. On that seven, on the five by seven awning, how it was flipped up right there. So instead of doing this, you may very well just position your awning over your block like that was stitched on a piece of fabric and just top stitch this edge to the fabric behind it instead of flipping it like I like we did on the five by seven but the numbers are all work out the widths will work out there's extra fabric for the height you have wiggle room for sure so Becky I, I would I think you'll be just fine using either mess message. And, uh, oh, Becky, you donate them to nursing homes and they need to wash them. Well, um, the pipe cleaner, you know, you can flatten for sure. You can straighten this out and, and then it will, I don't know how that'll wash. I mean, I think it'll, it would wash. Okay. But, um, pressing it might be a challenge. Yeah. Let's see. And then Judy Whitaker says two and three quarters inches above the shop for the big blocks. There you go. See, you ladies are brilliant. I love it. And if you need a job, if you need a job, let me know. We need help. <laughs> and Nancy, yes, you, uh, Modell, you most certainly can purchase the frames. They're available on our site. They're very reasonably priced. Like, don't make me say it, but, uh, and they're great. They ship flat. This um, bends up, it's all flat, and then you just bend it to get it, you know, uh, at a 90 degree angle and it sits perfectly on any tabletop. Yeah, well, we love them. Okay, let's see. Stitch the awning down to make it washable. Yep, absolutely. You can stitch the awning, awning down and, uh, and then, and you don't even have to make it 3D. I mean, 3D is just another thing that I thought was cool, but you don't have to make it 3D. 
And then Sue Brown says, I would leave the pipe cleaner out and just stitch the awning to the back fabric. There you go. That's a great solution, a beautiful solution. So it, you look at the, at the, the, res, the solutions we come up with when everybody speaks and shares openly. That's great. So what do you think? Do you like the flower shop? Are you happy that we did a flower shop? I was thinking, you know, April showers bring May flowers. And then I was thinking, you know, April showers, well, I don't, I've never really seen an umbrella store and how fun would that be? I wouldn't want an umbrella store. <laughs> so, yeah. And what about using Velcro for the awning? Sure, you could Velcro, Nancy, you most certainly could Velcro uh, the awning to the stand uh, to anything. And Sue Brown, you love the flower shop. I can't wait to see what you do with it. You know, Sue Brown over at OML Embroidery, she has, uh, she's creating her small town charms into Sueville. So she's got her whole town going, got her whole town going. So glad uh, you all are loving this, definitely. Me too. I really had a lot of fun and we're all, and you know, anxious and hopeful for a beautiful spring, right? Just what we need. So next week, we're talking stabilizers. And uh, I hope you'll join me at the same time, one o'clock next week. And we'll see you then. Thank you for joining me today.